Good copy. Negative on tracking. Heading to the bottom. It was an incredible moment. You know, we had uh, spent about an hour down on the floor navigating to get back to, to, to locate U-576. Is that it? And it was total darkness at 706 feet of water. Uh, I had Joe Hoyt next to me. Dude, congratulations, <laughs> bro. Proud to be yes. here with you, man. Look at that. Top side. <laughs> we got a visual. So when we first got to see the 576, it was just completely incredible. It was this kind of thing where we'd been looking and studying this for almost seven years uh, to the point where it almost seemed like, like fiction. And when it suddenly kind of reveals itself in front of you, you're just hit with the reality of it. It's utterly unbelievable. Work for it, brother. You did it. One of the things that we were unclear of from the sonar data was whether or not any of the crew had tried to escape. Uh, so the first thing when we got to the site was to go and look at the uh, all the points of egress, the hatches, to see whether or not any of the crew had done that. And it was immediately apparent that, that they hadn't. And that as soon as we realized that, we knew that we were looking at a, at a tomb for 45 men. It was, it was amazing to see this, this warship laying on the floor so close to our coastline. I grew up in North Carolina, and as a kid, I had never heard that there was this battle going on right on our shore. But to see it sitting there on the sea floor, this magnificent warship submarine that was filled with 45 German uh, sailors, it was uh, just changed my life and the way I perceive um, our own safety and security here in the United States. These submarines were very aggressive. They'd go right into the middle of, of a convoy and, and unload the torpedoes. And that's exactly what happened on this day when, when they launched four torpedoes at once and hit three ships all at one time in a, in a salvo. An amazing, uh, an amazing feat. We've seen a, a, an account of, of oil being reported at the surface, but the, the fact is, is the wreck of the blue fields uh, is 200 meters away from U-576 and all of that was in a, a very tight time frame of 10 or 20 minutes when U-576 attacked the blue fields and, and blew a uh, you know, tractor trailer size uh, hole straight through the mid section of blue fields and it, it sank within a matter of minutes. In 1942, July 15th, there's this attack, this chaos, and they're just deposited on the seabed and nothing has changed since. You know, we had read every, every story and account of the battle that we could find, and we were anticipating we would find a submarine in really bad shape. The, quite to the contrary. The framework, the outer shell, all the metalwork uh, was in perfect shape. And there doesn't appear to be any sort of breach of the hull or any, any significant framework structural damage of any sort. And, you know, I spent over five days on that wreck site in our submersible Nemo, um, both doing laser scanning and, and uh, visual photography and looking all around it, we found nothing out of uh, the ordinary except for the fact that it was laying on its starboard side. That's consistent with the number five ballast tank being flooded. Uh, we're not seeing any really you know, impact damage on the seabed. There's the, the diving planes are oriented such that they were trying to ascend or, or level off. Uh, and uh, none of that stuff is sheared off. You know, this, it kind of makes us ask the question of, you know, was it uh, sort of catastrophically sinking and slamming into the seabed, or was it settled down in some kind of controlled manner? So there, there's open questions, you know, and, and I want to know what happened. I suspect that uh, 
survivors of those sailors want to know what really happened to their loved ones. You know, how did they ultimately perish? And uh, I believe it was originally assumed that there was some sort of catastrophic event at the surface. Well, that's not the case by what Joe and I see, and it's not the case according to the laser scanning uh, results that have just finally come out in this last month or two. There's very good detail about the dimensions and the framework and all of the hardware and the escape hatches. The laser scanning system from 2G Robotics and Sonardyne's uh, positioning system gave us incredible three-dimensional modeling of the U-576 and, and now they're overlaying the original blueprints over this three-dimensional model that's been built from the uh, laser scanning and it's, it's showing that the thing is structurally intact. So last year we had set aside 15 days of, uh, of diving to accomplish the full task. We got the first seven days done and then uh, Hurricane Matthew started heading right at our site and then we had to, um, due to logistics, the only safe harbor for the ship was literally a 10 hour steam away and uh, attempted to wait it out. But unfortunately, we missed another seven days of, of diving on that site that we need to complete the uh, investigation. We did a, a, a high quantity of plan view looking straight down using the laser scanning system. We got all kinds of great resolution and, 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 and basically we came away with 75% of the, the data we needed from the lasers. We needed to go remount the laser scanner to where it was shooting at an elevation view, pointing dead sideways, and then sweep the perimeter of uh, U-576 and sweep uh, the blue fields. We, we needed that extra week to get that whole job done and better understand the whole battle. What we'd like to do now is go, go back to U-576 and use some modern technology that was developed for the offshore oil industry. The device called an acoustic camera, designed to look inside of pipes and cavernous structures uh, to determine whether there's solids or fluids or gaseous spaces inside of these pipes. We believe applying that acoustic camera technology to the uh, research on U-576 might help us fill in the rest of the story. We'd like to know, is that pressure vessel still holding air? Those sailors could have survived for days and attempted to escape, get the sub going again, or was it a catastrophic instant failure from the battle at the surface of the ocean? I believe is a great mystery that needs to be further discovered and the story told. You know, there's 45 sailors, 17-year-old boys right up to the skipper. Uh, they were all entombed in there. One of the great historic images that we have of the site is of the crew posed in the conning tower. And there's you know, four crewmen in there uh, you know, conducting their watch. And right when we came up on the conning tower, you can see these four giant snowy grouper just sitting in the conning tower. It's kind of, a, kind of an eerie metaphor. In the month leading up to our dives on U-576, I read the crew manifest. I read each one of their names and their birth dates. Uh, I looked for all the data I could find on each individual. At that time, my, my son was relatively the same age as these guys were 74 years ago. And I started thinking about what if he had been set off in a submarine to go across the Atlantic. And this was where he ended up. So as a father, it meant a lot to me to learn more about these young men, how their last day ended up, and tell their story. I think further investigation, understanding their family tree, finding people in their family that still are alive today, family members that maybe remembered their older brothers or uncles, cousins, potentially even fathers, might be, uh, really compelling. I'd, I'd love to find a way 
to first locate those extended family members and then subsequently on the 75th anniversary of the, the downing of U-576, take one of those individuals to the, uh, the gravesite of their loved one. It's an incredibly peaceful site and to bring closure is a really powerful, decent thing to do and that's what we want to do.